Imagine for a moment you work at a company that's being disrupted by larger corporations lowering market price, taking market share. One where technology is automating the manual processes that you've been doing for the last 10 years. A company where your customers are finding new ways to discover and buy your products. Now some of you can probably relate to one or all three of those things, but it's impacting industry everywhere. And fishmongers. Now you might not have thought we're going to talk about fishmongers this morning, but we're going to sort of start there with a story about Mr. Heng. Mr. Heng's a real fishmonger from Selangor in Malaysia. Similarly, his industry is being disrupted by larger corporations who can buy in larger quantities. Their customers are finding new ways of buying their products and technology is taking over the work he's been doing for the last 10 years. Now, he loves his job, but it's a tough job. He wakes up at 3 a.m. every morning when it's still dark, the family is asleep, goes down to the waterfront, buys his produce, drives two hours to a wet market in Kuala Lumpur where he sells his products. Now he started to see a change. And when his, him and his friends were gathering and talking about how do they navigate this change, because they're not in technology, they're not making the ships of the future. But the similar things are impacting them. So they looked to Taiwan. Now in Taiwan they were doing live fish auctions. So they had a choice, they're at an inflection point, it's like a turning point in the industry, similar to yourselves and, and, and AI. Do you go fully into it? Do you go a little bit into it and dip your toe into the water? Or do you go, yeah, I'm going to continue doing what I've done for 10 or 15 years? So what was the result of all this? Well, the result is he's now got thousands of customers in every auction which he does. He uses Facebook Live. He taught himself that the smartphone doesn't just make calls or send text messages or WhatsApps. The 4G coverage was getting better. The smartphone he had, it was one of the cheaper ones, but it had better processing power. Therefore, it could run live auctions. Those live auctions take place between 7 p.m. and midnight. He was previously getting up at 3 a.m. and working a long day, a lot nicer. Now going to bed at 3 a.m., a lot happier. So he was able to use it where customers place their bids in the comments section by a certain time frame. The winners are the ones with the highest price. He then arranges for transporters to deliver the product direct to the door. But does it work from a business side? Well, yes. Revenue increased tenfold. Profits three times higher. He had extra costs with the transporting side. He's happier. He's found a new market. And he's continually learning, looking at the next steps. He's probably not ready yet to start looking at what data he can extract and use predictive analytics to work out what fish to buy at what time and what's the best market and use e-wallets to do payment. But that's his future. What we want to talk well, about Well, you've got to do learning as a lifelong commitment. Historically, the skills we learned when we were in our early 20s could last us throughout a lifetime of employment till we were about 60. Yes, we go into management and then we go up. Now it's really 15 or 20 years before it might be totally different. We've got to learn again. You're at the forefront of a lot of this technological change. It's got to be an ongoing thing. So you've got to keep learning, got to keep upskilling, seeing what the future is going to be, taking a bit of a stance and saying, well, what is your career path? Where do you want to go? What do you need to know to become an expert in some of these new fields? You need to be able to speak up. When we're talking about innovation, a lot of the problem, and especially within Singapore, and I've been here 10 years now, so I know it quite, quite well, we've got some of the best ideas coming from the brightest people coming but people aren't speaking So that's the type up. of thing which can be done now. They're looking at everything from your facial movements, your lip movements, your voice, your body language, and trying to read that and create a news anchor. Now at the moment it's being typed in, but we're all thinking, how do we get to the point where it can read the news and adapt and tell jokes and have personality and have charisma? Now we all thought we'd do, we're going to do that in 2021. We know we're not moving that fast, but what's it going to take to get that next jump again to the point where maybe we can? I started with a story about Mr. Heng, and with stories we never really know what direction they're going, we never really know where they'll end up. My hope is that if companies are preparing for Industry 4.0, they're looking at how they can harness the best data. 
how they can recruit and develop the best talent and use the best technology that's available to create your own future of work and also to be able to measure the connected world. If all firms can do this, then hopefully the changing business environment will truly create the greatest opportunities of our time. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.